Thank you, everyone, for inviting me to this auspicious occasion. Um, I am a, uh, a a dear childhood friend of the uh, of the groom, and I uh, have never met the bride in my life. I don't know what her name is or what she even looks like until today. But thank you, nonetheless, for inviting me. Why are we here today? Well, we are here because two people at this unspecified amount of time ago, probably several years, sometimes during late teenage years, early 20 years, experienced um, a, a hormonal imbalance, um, a hormonal reaction in the presence of each other, which um, reciprocated uh, sexual feelings. And uh, these sexual feelings have uh, continued at, uh, you know, to whatever degree, varying degrees it has, and somehow has managed to persist until today. Um, and today now we feel the need to necessitate a, uh, a public confirmation that this commitment will last until death do us part. And by death, I mean a metaphorical death, which could include the death of his salary or the death of of her hormones that made him her wildly attracted to him in the first place, if she ever was attracted to him. That could also be not specified. But I assure you all that this is a time to celebrate. Okay? The marriage of institution, the, the institution of marriage used to be a barbaric and oppressive institution run and dominated completely by men. Women were treated, were in fact codified, according to English common law, as property. Google it. Google is surely right. Marriage was impressive. For thousands and thousands of years, women were forced into chattel slavery to be taken at an early age, as soon as their, their puberty bleeding reactions began when they were 12 or 13, forced to be handed off from their fathers, their cruel parents, handed off to a strange and older man with lots of money, because why couldn't women have any money at all? Handed off to him to be ravished, perpetually locked in a rape cage, to be impregnated and forced to rear all of his children over and over again until her vagina it's, a, it's like a hot dog going through a hallway. Absolutely tragic. It is, but fortunately, fortunately, about 100 years ago, feminists came to the rescue. They saved women. And men too, they saved men as well, from the oppressive institution of marriage. They, reform, they made reforms and they reset the rights and the obligations of both parties so now, women have rights, and men have returned to their obli real obligations. So now, today, we do not celebrate an oppressive, terrible, evil, patriarchal institution that made humanity survive for thousands and thousands of years. No, today we celebrate a union that isn't bound based on such shallow concepts as tradition and and family values or or um mindfulness of the future of our species not at all such shallow concepts such barbaric concerns no longer need worry us in this modern era no today we come together this man and woman come together purely out of true love and hormones and his salary. Today, we celebrate a bond of true love, a union that is not coerced by any means, a union that is virtually meaningless, except for the emotions of those involved. We are entering a union that could be withdrawn at any one point based on the whims of one party or the other um, and could be withdrawn for virtually no stated reason at all. And that, my friends, is the privilege that we live in today in this modern society, in 2019. 
that we are no longer enslaved by promises and obligations to one another. Not at all. Can you believe that this institution was so barbaric and disregarding of the rights of women that the bride was customarily expected to be a virgin, a virgin before she was given to the, to the groom. That, my friends, is a, a terrible and evil practice. Today, today, thank goodness, women are free to be as promiscuous as they please, to, to, to not even have the question raised of how many cocks have slipped inside of her vagina or, or, or even whether she might already be pregnant right now or, that, or, or whether there might need to be a paternity test. No, th those questions, those shouldn't even cross your mind. That's like, that, that is a, the rudest thing you could possibly ever, a man could ever possibly expect um, from, to, from a woman. Um, so it's very fortunate, very, for, I'm, I'm very glad for the groom that he has decided to enter this, uh, this, uh, this arrangement. It will, it will surely, it will be entirely of, uh, benefit to him, uh, because he will be serving, um, his woman. However, I must warn the bride and the groom and everyone here that there are people out there, nefarious individuals, mostly men, mostly bitter jaded men who had bad luck who warn other men to not get married what would be even really rude would be if one of these individuals were to show his face at his own friend's wedding and to make such a a speech to warn his friend to not get married that'd be scandalous indeed but luckily that's not happening at all well, why? Why would you, why would a man not want to be married at all? Marriage is wonderful. It's a it's a constant stable supply of snuggles. <clears throat> snuggles. You know, well, women women she would she has no incentive to refuse your uh, your carnal urges. But if she does, just always remember that they're not needs. No one needs snuggles. No, they're just, it's all part of your mind. It's part of toxic masculinity that has been socialized into you in a misogynistic society. As you can see, there's still much progress to be made, even though that we've watered down marriage to basically a parody of the barbaric ritual it once was. Don't worry, marriage is wonderful and amazing now. Well, uh, both parties are equal, so I assure you, I assure you, don't listen to those naysayers. But something that those the these evil guys who call themselves MGTOW will say is that just because you think your relationship is special doesn't mean that it is. Now, I assure you, even though that 50% of marriages end in divorce and 75% of second marriages end in divorce and 90% of third marriages end in divorce, marriage is all about death until death do his part, as I said earlier. And by that, I mean a metaphorical death of either the husband's salary or the woman's emotions. But I assure you, true love always prevails. It has prevailed with the bride and groom today so far, and it will continue to prevail. There's no reason why we shouldn't believe that it will prevail, except for those fake new statistics about how 50% of marriages are failing. See, people who cite those statistics, they're just misogynists. They're just bitter and jaded. Your relationship is special. Trust me. Everyone knows it. You know it. Believe in your heart. Believe in your heart that you are, love is true, and that there is, there should be no other reason that both of you should be obligated to be with each other, except for the butterflies and the unicorns that fly out from your butts and your ears and your eyes, and whenever you gaze upon each other's lovely complexions, and the joy that you will experience day in and day out, 
in your uh, pointless and childless union. Anyways, um, that is about all. Um, I Again, I wish the bride and the groom the best of luck um, in their commitment. Um, and whatever you do, stay off YouTube.